back to our top of the wall. My name is Mason Up, and we have, for the first time in a long while, I know, I know, a popper deck deck. We are doing a deck called Tinker Toys. You may think that it's similar to a deck that I did prior prior to this, um, a while ago, called um, Thrumming Dynamo that used Proliferate and played with a bunch of uh, different kinds of cards that would get Proliferate so you'd have a laundry list of stuff. Uh, this is a very similar deck, um, but it is much faster, it's much stronger, it's overall much more powerful. And you may also notice our curve is Mono 2 Drop. Primarily Mono 2 Drop. The reason for this is because we have two of the Depletion Counter lands. We have Peat Bog, which is a land that produces two black mana when it is tapped. And when the last counter is removed, uh, you, you sacrifice it. Spre uh, the Sprazen Scurry is the same. Uh, when you remove the last of the two counters after when you uh, tap it uh, to add mana to your mana pool, you sacrifice it. But if you proliferate, you add more counters to it. So you can continuously just use this as a land that taps for two mana. Turns out lands that tap for two mana have a history of Magic the Gathering as being good? So I'm willing to bet that if I play one of these on two, untap, use it to produce a mana while playing another land, like let's say Peat Bog, or let's say an Island or something, uh, then the next turn follow up, uh, immediately play another, let's say a one drop. Where's our one drop? Where's our single <laughs> singular one drop? Yes, uh, Arcbomb, like Arcbomb Worker, and then play a Callous Dismissal, or something like this, or a Contingency Plan to proliferate, or a Throwing Bird, and then uh, just sort of start proliferating repeatedly getting us more counters and everything and you know what goes really good with putting counters and everything plus one plus one counters modular actually works really well uh we have four arc bound workers and four arc bound stingers and we also have four uh fester creeps these are all creatures that enter with plus one plus one counters on them already and when we go to proliferate uh, with any of our proliferate cards, Steady Progress, the Contingency Plan, or Thrumming Bird, or Guild Pack Informant, we end up putting a plus one plus one counters on our lands, we put a plus one plus one counters on our creatures, and we can actually just sort of like build up this very big army, uh, similar to um, Hardened Scales, but we're putting the plus one plus one counters on after they enter the battlefield. And this, uh, this modular ability, when the creature dies, we actually can keep some of that value and put the plus one plus one counters on another artifact creature. So in addition to these two artifact creatures, which we have four of each, so that's eight, and then uh, three Aether Supers, which can make one one uh, servo creatures, which is an artifact creature, we have about 11 artifact creatures to choose from to put these things on. And we also have... Lezotep Reaver. We have uh, we have a mass in this deck with uh, the Callous Dismissal. So with these two cards in the deck, we actually do have a supply of these creatures that also have plus and plus encounters on that we also can increase in size by proliferating. If you, I don't know if you were there, you were alive and breathing for War of the Spark that just came out, but yeah, it turns out they want you to use those mechanics together. It's really good. <laughs> Uh, so these are just really good to have slotted in together. And speaking of cards that interact with your opponent, we have, in addition to the Callous Dismissal, uh, we also have Die Young, a card that works with energy, so we can put energy counters on ourselves, proliferate that, proliferate that too, as just another thing to choose from. And as the game goes longer and longer, uh, Die Young actually gets more powerful. And... We also have Aether Theorist. Part of the power of energy counters is being able to use it for different things. So the energy counters can not only help us scry or make us a 1-1 one, one, or give a creature minus 1, minus 1. We can sort of like just pick and choose between all of these things. And we can choose whether we want stronger removal, uh, better card selection, or we want a more stronger uh, board presence. Well, for... Other value that we have, like the Pentad Prism, which helps fix us and helps us ramp. Uh, it essentially 
reduces the cost of each time that we proliferate. And if we have multiples of these, we can almost make our proliferate cards free, which is just sweet. And Aether Theris will help us dig farther and deeper to get more of those cards that we can cast for almost free. And uh, Opaline Bracers. This one was part of the old deck previous. And I like this card so much, I decided to keep a one of in the main deck. The reason for this is Sunburst, it enters with charge counters, so you can proliferate, make the number of counters on the bracers uh, the total higher, so you can keep making the braces bigger. And you can keep equipping it to creatures for just two mana, so you can just go, all right, um, I have a Pantad Prism on the battlefield, play Opaline Bracers, um, so I have all four counters on it, because I can use this to create any color play Pentide Prism, get four counters, and then say, all right, proliferate, put another counter on it, proliferate, put another counter on it, equip it to a creature for two. We have several flying creatures. We have flying creatures of plenty. And <laughs> then just get in, in the air for a good seven damage. Wait, skill pack performance? Yeah, it's still a one watch, just more expensive, which is why it's a three of versus throwing bird. And so for our mana base, um, we have just the Dismal Backwaters, the basic islands, basic swamps, in addition to our uh, bog and our scurry. That is the deck so far. Um, we may seem a little bit light on removal, but we do have the Fester Creep in the main, four of. So we can actually have a sweet game against Elves, uh, game one, to just immediately go, all right. Best of creep. <laughs> Make it bigger. Remove a plus and plus encounter for Fester Creep. Kill all the dorks. <laughs> Kill all the dorks. Gotcha. <laughs> get the get a little sweet um four for one going every time we remove a uh, plus one plus one counter from it, giving all the creatures minus one minus one. Our sideboard is to help us with boggles with the chainers edicts. We have choking sands, which helps fight Tron, so we get to destroy a land and deal two damage to that land's controller if it was not basic we have a dispel to help fight through uh controlling matchups that just try to like love to counter our spells we have three duress uh for again control matchups we don't like control matchups uh we have the three hydroblast to help fight through aggo because we're a little bit slower we are much faster than the previous version but we are slower we do need to we do need a little help stabilizing we have the two relic of progenitus I always want to have at least two graveyard hate cards because there's always there's always a graveyard deck in the format in any format so long as there's access to the graveyard you probably want a relic of progenitus if you can have one in your format and when you don't have them that makes the graveyard decks more powerful more prevalent and even harder to fight so always have your relics on handy or a neil spell bomb or something like that uh, and serrated arrows for an additional target, an additional thing to put plus to put counters on and help us remove more things. And it does actually work much better against mid-range decks uh, that has various sizes of creatures and creatures that can be larger. We can just end up putting minus one minus one counters on them, make them a little bit smaller, a little bit easier for us to handle and pick apart. Uh, when we grow our creatures, um, we also get to shrink theirs. So we can end up making our 2-2 two -two a 3-3 three -three and their Gurmag Angler that has a minus one minus one counter on it down to a 3-3. Three -three. So it works out in our favor to have this against uh, some of those decks. And we can actually um, we can actually use this against Elves too. It does actually do a, a decent job against Elves, surprisingly. Uh, you would think four mana would just be a little bit too slow to fight against elves, but if you're on the play, um, and we are playing these lands that tap for two, we can get this down on turn three, start just picking off one or two, slow them down. Um, nothing like getting a little uh, Priest of Titania off the table. Repeatedly. And that is the deck. Uh, feel free to check out the link in the description below to check out this deck and check through the maybe board if you have any way any ideas like how to improve the deck i have a bunch of extra things that i was looking through down here um i'm sure there's probably another combination of cards within the maybe within all of my maybe sections 
to uh, play the deck in a completely different way. Um, comment, subscribe, like, and let me know what you would like to see in the next deck tech. Thanks for watching. Coming in for that face touch.